All right, g'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. We are back with a power rankings. I don't think I did this last week. I think it took a week off. We are now removed from all the bias. Everyone's played the same amount of games. Um, and so what we're going to do today is try and do a bit of a power ranking based on form mostly. Like I say every other time, like power rankings are a little bit tricky because they are arbitrary. I suppose it's trying to reflect, you know, who are the best teams in the competition right now. And this is an interesting time to try and rank them because more so than any other round that I think I've done this, I feel like there are teams who are ranked highly with the form lines of bottom four sides. And there are teams that are like well and truly outside the top eight that are playing like some of the form sides of the competition. And so this ranking is very divergent from the actual current ladder, which I suppose is the entire point. So as we usually do, we will start from the bottom and work up and I'll do my best to justify why I've got teams ranked where I do. And this is a specific focus on the last five rounds. Not entirely, but it is there to inform us. So I think we still have the same bottom three teams that has been unanimously considered the bottom three teams this entire season. Um, however, I have switched up the order a little bit and it's actually inverted on the actual ladder at the moment. So I still have West Coast in 18th. The main reason being, I think since I last did this video, we've, they've played one game after having one bye and they played pretty well against Essendon. And then there's three games where they lost to North St. Kilda and uh, Adelaide by 100 points. Yes, their Demons win was in the last five, but we're a little bit removed from that. So they just haven't done enough. Richmond still sit one spot ahead of them. They have a, a win over the Crows at Adelaide Oval in their last couple of games. They were pretty good against the Cats. They were good, good against the Bombers. Um, you know, I think, again, they're also fairly removed from their big loss against the Lions. So just ahead of West Coast. And North Melbourne's last three weeks, which has a win over West Coast in that time, and two close losses to the Demons and the Pies, elevate them to being the best form side of this three, but it's not enough to elevate them further. The Crows off the bias stay in the bottom four, um, with their one win in their last five being against the Eagles. has been a pretty tough fixture, but they did lose at home to Richmond, so I think are firmly entrenched in that bottom four for mine. The next bottom team I have is Geelong. So they've only won one of their last five. Their one win was a win over the Tigers, where they had to come from behind in this. They played well, um, and they've had some tough fixtures around that. They just played the Blues. They lost to the Swans. They lost to the Giants at home and they lost to the Suns by 10 goals as well So as far as form lines go, I think Geelong really deserve to be in the bottom five at this current point in time And even below St Kilda who move up a spot in this purely because Geelong have been so bad But I mean in their last five St Kilda have won an extra game They've beaten the Suns, they've beaten the Eagles They were decent against the Lions and there's also losses to the Demons and the Dockers So I have St Kilda above Geelong on current form to be honest and then Melbourne just ahead of that Melbourne would be lower had they lost to North but uh, in the end I have to count it as a win. Having said that though, their form line is really concerning. In their last five, other than North, they, they had a six goal win of St. Kilda, but then they got well beaten by the Pies. They got annihilated by the Dockers and they lost to the Eagles as well. So they're the next worst side in the competition on current form. And then there's Port Adelaide who are also in a big form slump. They have two wins the last five. It was a win over North Melbourne in Tasmania and a win over the Hawks, which was a great comeback. Um, but nonetheless, the only two wins in their last five, they had a huge loss to the Lions and the uncompetitive nature of that is factored into this as well. They also were quite poor against the Giants. They were also well beaten at home by the Blues. So there you go. Like Port Adelaide, Melbourne and Geelong, three teams that in the first six, seven weeks of this season, you thought are surely going to play finals. And I don't know if that is necessarily locked in anymore. I've got the two expansion sides next, Gold Coast in 10th and GWS in ninth, both of these sides have won two of their last five. Gold Coast have won their two home games against the Bombers and the Cats, and they lost to the Dockers, Saints, and Blues all the way from home. GWS is, again, not in great form. They have beaten the Power, and they have beaten the Cats at GMHBA, and that's solid. And their three losses were against three fairly informed sides in the Swans, the Hawks, and the Western Bulldogs. So they're okay. They're not as bad as some other teams in the competition are right now. I'm um, talking about the Giants, that is. But a fair way off their best, in my personal opinion, and that's why I have them outside the top eight teams on current form. So who is the eighth best side in the competition? I've probably got that as Fremantle. Now they've only dropped one in the last five, admittedly, but they've beaten the Suns, the Demons, the Saints, and they did have a big loss to the Bulldogs. So to justify this, I have this cluster of three teams here. I've got Essendon in seventh and the Bulldogs in sixth. So Essendon haven't done a lot wrong. Their wins have been against lowly teams, West Coast, Richmond, North Melbourne, all of the bottom three. They were solid against the Suns away, which is not an easy fixture based on the data of this season. They lost to the Blues, who are you know, a very good side at the moment by four goals. So Fremantle technically got more points in that time frame and arguably against better sides. For me, I just don't know if I don't know if I've seen enough from Fremantle to elevate them over Essendon. This is probably where it's a little bit subjective in my personal opinion. I have them line ball. Essendon is two spots higher on the ladder. Uh, I don't think Essendon have done enough to drop. So that, let me know in the comments what you think about that. The Bulldogs are highest because I think in their best games, they've looked really good. 
Big win over the Dockers. They beat the Pies. Both sides were undermanned. They beat the Giants in Sydney only in the last five. And their two losses were against the Brisbane Lions and Sydney, who are two of the better sides of the competition on current form. So that's how I've got it. Dogs, then Essen and the Fremantle, but it's hard to split those three. So then we're into our top five, and I probably cluster the next three together. Hawthorne stay in fifth. They haven't played, I don't think, since the last time I did this video. Or maybe they've had one win. Either way, they're four of their last five, and I think that's six of their last seven. One loss against the Power where they were in a great position to win it. Other than that, they beat the Tigers, the Giants, the Crows, and the Lions. And, um, you know, it's been a little while since Hawthorne have really looked poor. Like, and that's probably what elevates them ahead of some of the teams that I've got below, who have probably all looked a bit shoddy at times. Collingwood in fourth, they dropped one spot no, through no fault of their own, other than the fact that I've got another team emerging ahead of them. And that's the Brisbane Lions. I think I'm current form, the Brisbane Lions are the third best team in the competition. It's partly helped by the fact that you know most other teams are faulted in some way, shape, or form. So they've actually won four of their last five games, and I think the game before that might have been a draw against the Crows. So they beat the Power heavily in Adelaide. They beat the Saints in a bit of a shootout. They beat the Dogs at Marvel Stadium in a comprehensive win, and they also beat the Tigers by something like 100 points. They did lose to the Hawks in their last five, so that's where you could probably mix this around a little bit. But it feels like Brisbane have flicked a switch to some extent, in my personal opinion. And I think they deserve to elevate ahead of, uh, you know, a Collingwood and a Hawthorne. Collingwood, again, have only dropped one game in the last five. There was a draw in there as well. They lost to the Bulldogs. Their most recent win was a very close win over the North Melbourne. And so, you know, you just sort of weight that against them a little bit, conceded something like 18 goals against North Melbourne. Haven't done anything wrong. Still a major contender. I just think Brisbane might have elevated off the back of some very recent form. So then we got our top two teams. Surprise, surprise, no real change. Carlton have won four of their last five. Their only loss was against Sydney. Too good for the Bombers, who are third. Too good for the Cats, who looked good at one point. Uh, the good against the Power in Adelaide beat them away from home and good against the Suns as well. Sydney, how much more do we need to say? They have not lost the game for a long time. And in that run of form was a win over the team I have second. So I don't think I need to justify that too much further. But let me know in the comments, guys. That is my power rankings. It's tricky stuff. There's a few, even as I was talking, then I was thinking, should I change it? But I'm going to lock it in. Let me know in the comments what you agree and disagree with. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.